Good morning, campers. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we're actually going to do a flight with the uh, new Airbus throttle levers. First, I want to show you the settings that I'm using to get the most out of the uh, out of our Airbus throttle levers. So we're in the Bravo throttle quad, and we have the Airbus selected. Let's just go ahead and uh, let's go through. So miscellaneous plus minus are going to be your uh, the knob to the right of the autopilot panel probably already have that set. I use uh, the flap lever on the right side of the throttle panel as uh, fast forward and slow down uh, since we, there's a dedicated flap axis with this configuration. I just find that's actually super useful for um, airliner flights uh, if you want to fast forward and slow down. It'll also probably let us do this video in one go instead of having to edit. Uh, anyway, so as far as the buttons I have mapped, I've got uh, the third switch from the right is mapped to anti-ice. I find it's it's better for the sim, like it has less issues if you use the set uh, option. So in this case, uh, the anti-ice button is the switch being flipped up, so, and then it cuts it off when you put the switch back down. So instead of mapping up and down to anti-ice on and off, you just map the uh, button up to the set command for that particular uh, function that you desire. That works on everything except the landing gear for some reason. On landing gear you have to do the uh, separate up and down commands for the gear lever. Uh, but that's a broader uh, issue with the sim, I think, <laughs> and not, not particular to the Bravo throttle quadrant. I think the uh, I think the Airbus throttle that you can get from Thrustmaster has the exact same issue. Anyway, so uh, starter buttons I, for the uh, in-game A320, I have the third and fourth buttons uh, set for the starter, and then that's also your fuel valves. It's important you map both of the starters and the fuel valves to the same button. So the engine starter one, fuel valve one on the left button, and starter two, fuel valve two on the right button. That's important whether you're using the Bravo throttle quad and using some of the switches on that for this, or if you're using the, uh, the Airbus throttle, uh, you want to make sure you have both of these items mapped to the correct uh, to the correct switches because uh, if you just do one or the other your engines won't start <laughs> but anyway uh, under flight instruments you want to set all of these to the respective positions on the uh, dial to the left of your uh, autopilot panel on the Bravo um, these all work better now if you had them uh, previously I had mine set to where uh, it was a multiple button press so it was a combination of turning the dial to the right button and then turning the selector on the right to uh, increase and decrease your altitude. That actually works, uh, that worked better before and now it works worse <laughs> because now uh, plus and minus will uh, start increasing at a higher rate if you keep spinning the, the selector uh, after the most recent fix. So you definitely want to be using plus and minus along with, um, along with your selector there. So plus and minus and then, you know, VSI plus minus. Uh, all that fun stuff. Altitude, plus and minus. So if you're not using plus and minus, it'll take longer to enter the number you want uh, in the sim. Though if that's, you know, if that's what you want, um, if you want it to only go in increments of 100, then you can do the uh, multiple button press configurations. Anyway, and also, uh, is it under radio? Yes. Uh, so, okay, so under radio and VOR is your VOR, VOR OBS uh, selector. So you'll need to find that under there. It's not under the same instruments and systems uh, heading as all the other ones. So that's going to be the one you want to map to the CRS dial. Not as important for the, for the Airbus because that's all done through the, uh, through the menu, but useful none, nonetheless. Anyway, the thing I'm sure you're all here for, brakes, uh, parking brake, far right button, not the thing you're here for. Uh, ridiculous. So flight control surface. The secondary control surface is going to be your flap axis. So that's going to be uh, joystick L axis Z, which is the far right axis on your Bravo throttle quad. And you want to make sure that is not reversed or else it will be backwards. Same thing with the spoilers. A joystick L axis Y is the far left axis on your Bravo throttle. And I also happen to have a... Uh, I have a switch set to arm and disarm spoilers because for some reason they couldn't be bothered to put a button for that on the actual spoiler lever, which missed opportunity if you ask me. I think that could have uh, that would have been really cool. <laughs> uh, control trimming surfaces, your uh, nose up and down wheel on the left side of 
uh, the left side of your throttle quad. You probably already have that set from the defaults. Uh, landing gear, we went through that already. Lights, I've got uh, I've got landing lights and strobes set to switches on the um, on the quadrant. The other ones I flick with the mouse in the game because uh, you don't have to hit the other ones on and off while you're flying for the most part. But these two you do. <laughs> anyway, and power management. So throttle, this is where it gets unique to the Airbus uh, throttle throttle levers. So you want to set uh, for the two engine configuration, you want to set throttle one is joystick R axis Z or Z if you are Canadian or British or uh, basically anything but American. Um, and you'll notice it's not entirely a smooth operation I've got going here. So you've got to reverse the axis and then you'll also be adjusting the sensitivity of it in a moment. But then for throttle decrease, this is an important one because uh, just like on the commercial levers that come with the joy the uh, the commercial levers that come with the Bravo throttle, you have buttons on both the levers and in the space, the uh, detent below the axis. So you need to map both the button for flipping the lever up and the uh, slide, moving the lever down once you've flipped the button up. So you you won't be able to move the axis the uh, the throttle lever down until you flip the buttons up. So you can, if you want, just map the, uh, you can just map the act of moving the uh, lever into that, into that reverser range, and it'll work just fine. But uh, just be aware that there is a button to the, uh, to the reversers being flipped up and down. Uh, I saw Simhanger uh, had his, he got his um, Airbus throttles in, and for some reason, his don't seem to have a button there. So I don't know what's going on with that, but it's important to note, uh, especially if you are using, if you are updating a config uh, configuration that you had working with the regular commercial levers, it's important to note, this is a different button than the reverse lever on the Boeing style throttles that came with it. So it's a different number button, <laughs> important to make sure you get that right and actually double check this before you try to go flying with it. Anyway, onto the sensitivity curves. So, <laughs> leave these alone, and then these two. <laughs> these two are the ones that are a little bit weird. So, the reason I've got them like this is because there are marked detents on the Bravo throttle axis that correspond to positions uh, in the on the throttle levers in the game. And if you want them to be as close as possible to accurate, uh, so the ones on your throttle quad matching the ones in the game, this is the setting I found that has gotten as close as possible to uh, accurate. The only one that's not right, the uh, the flex takeoff detent is a little bit off because I can't, there's not currently a way to make this uh, a linear. Uh, if you could make this linear, because this the climb detent is about here on the curve and the flex, the flex, uh, takeoff is about here on the curve, and then, of course, toga is right at the top. But unfortunately, this has to be a curve and not just a straight line. Uh, so you'll see it when you put it in the flex takeoff position, which is where I've got it in the flex position on my Bravo right now. It is a little bit above the halfway point between these two points. But then bring it back to the climb detent, and it's right at the halfway mark, or is right at the uh, this tick mark. So. Uh, I find the climb detent to be the more important one for being able to see you visually on the throttle. So uh, that's the one I aimed to have most accurate. So that gives you the, the climb detent and the toga detent uh, in the right positions on the Bravo. Um, and then the rest of it, uh, it moves relatively smooth through this this range. Uh, the sensitivity gets a little weird right around right around this spot here, but uh, that's, as, <laughs> that's as linear as I could get it to go for everything below the climb detent. Um, and honestly, it's it, it works fine in the game uh, for our purposes. And yeah, so what you need to do, you need to move the neutral to negative 41% and sensitivity, uh, positive sensitivity to 78% uh, will get you this curve that I've got here. I'm sure there's a way to do it better than this, uh, but if there is, I haven't figured it out yet. So I hope this helps anyone who uh, has not been able to get their detents to work. So anyway, let's actually get into the game. Okay, we're done. We're done here. <laughs> Let's actually do a flight. Uh, so, 
go back. I'm sure there's plenty of people that have just immediately dropped out of this video because they're not interested in the flying part. Ten whole minutes of just setting up the plane. Uh, so we're going to do the a different library because I've discovered that my pilot voice cannot say world travel. Um, hmm. S7, Pacifica, Orbit, Global Freightways. I'm feeling like uh, Orbit today. Let's do Orbit. All right, so customization. Let's get our airplane number N39263. N39263. And we're going to be orbit, orbit, uh, and we'll be orbit uh, 263. Sure, let's do that. Uh, and then the game will set the fuel for us automatically. We are going to be taking off from, uh, in, uh, from San Antonio, flying to Indianapolis, 800 nautical miles. So that can go away. So San Antonio, KSAT. And Indianapolis, Kind. There we go. Let's get an IFR flight plan, if you'd be so kind. Boom. All right, we're not going to sim brief this. I don't feel like it. <laughs> Let's see here. So we want to start at... Uh, Let's just zoom in here. See if we can't pick an appropriate. Ooh. Interesting. Let's just actually take a look at uh, San Antonio International Maps. San Antonio International Airport. Uh, maps. There we go. Can I have a satellite view, please? Thank you. Okay, so what are our terminals? So these are, oh, that's the cargo apron over here. So we just want one of these, uh, it looks like. So make that go away. We'll take, uh, how about gate 100 and, uh, sorry, 14. Let's take gate 14. Set as departure. Boom, got it. Uh, and then we're going to zoom back in again. Let's work on our instrument departures, LMO3. Oh, these are specific runways. Ugh. Um, okay, so we do need, I think an Alamo departure is going to be good. Let's uh, just run through all the other departures real quick. That Alice departure, what's that look like? That goes west. So Alamo is still looking best. Uh, Bowie departure. That goes south. So yeah, Alamo is still looking good. Our departure is going to be in the basement of the Alamo, I think. All right, so Lee Han. Nope, Alamo is still better than that. Oops, missed it. Millet. Nope, that also goes south. There's a lot of different uh, departures here. THX. Nope, Alamo is still best. Yeah, okay, so we're going to use an Alamo departure. Uh, the wind is currently 168 at 10. Uh, so what's going to be our best runway here? One, six, eight. So basically coming out of this direction. What are these two runways? One, three, right. One, three, left. So I think uh, one, three, left is going to be uh, Alamo 13 left, I think is going to be what we want. Alamo 13 left. How about that? Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, perfect. All right, so arrivals for Indianapolis. Let's just do, uh, let's see how the Clang 7 looks. Boom. Complete wrong side of the airport. All right, what's the Gibbs look like? Uh, comes from the wrong direction. So let's keep scrolling down. Jax, what's Jax look like? Also from the wrong direction. I love the picking uh, the arrival part. So the Colts also not great. Racy. Ooh, Racy looks good. And it's an all. So what's Smook? Smook is the same as Racy. 
it looks like. Uh, what about sync point? Sync point doesn't appear to do much of anything. All right, so let's let's do racy. Racy R five all. Okay, cool. And then we'll do an automatic approach uh, to whatever runway they feel like giving me. Perfect. Okay, so that's loaded that in. We're gonna do live weather. Live time, we don't need scenery right now, we're flying at night. That's our flight plan, let's get in the plane. Boom. <laughs> I'm not gonna make y'all sit through the entire flight. I don't think, unless I feel evil. I might feel evil. No, I'm probably just gonna get through the takeoff and then uh, dump y'all and uh, go land. <laughs> We'll see how, how much I can shorten this flight using the, uh, the fast forward options in the game. And I need to get the SimConnect client up. There we go. So some other interesting things that I've discovered about, because uh, this is also my, today was the first time flying in A320 since I got the uh, the radio panel for <laughs> for my flight sim setup, and apparently that doesn't work with the uh, with the A320, which is fascinating and a little annoying, but that's fine. We usually pass the uh, we usually pass the radio duty off to the co-pilot anyway, uh, at least I do on this particular plane, since this is a plane that's a bit of a handful uh, during takeoff and landing. <laughs> Two handfuls, one on the stick, one on the throttles. Um, do, 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 do. Where is my notepad? There it is. Okay, cool. So we can get to the ATIS. Ooh, good lighting here tonight. Excellent. I'm ready to fly. Boom, put me in a plane. Interesting. Let's look outside. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Alright, so we are... The runway we're taking off from is going to be over there. Let's see if we can't get ourselves the jetway connected. Oh, we have no... no power. That's fine. Let's get batteries on and engage the short power. Excellent. Let's turn the generators off since they're useless at the moment anyway. Let's turn the bleed controls off since they're also useless. That's the APU bleed, I think. That's already off. Okay, cool. Let's get ground services. Uh, San Antonio ground, please. Uh, give me a jetway if you'd be so kind. San Antonio ground orbit 263. Could you please connect the jetway to the aircraft? Orbit 263, the jetway is going to be connected. Perfect, thank you. Uh, mind the window, please. Getting a little, a little close. You're going to scratch the paint here. <laughs> Alright, San Antonio ATIS. Let's write this down. San Antonio airport information echo 0.000. Echo. Zero five five at one two. That's a completely different direction. That's a completely different direction. Two niner niner eight. Okay. All aircraft read back all short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact. You have Edno. At least we got the right runway. That's good. So back to San Antonio ground. San Antonio airport information echo zero four zero zero zero. Excuse me. 
Wind zero five five at one two. Excuse me. Visibility. San Antonio Airport information echo zero what? four zero zero Zulu. Wind zero five five at one two. Visibility one zero. Sky condition few clouds at. Okay, that did it. <laughs> Weird. All right, so let's get this up to two niner niner eight. Come on, just a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna just uh, manual. No, 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 no. That was too much. Two niner niner eight. Doing this on a laptop can be difficult sometimes. All right, and let's go ahead and get the APU started. So boom. There's no APU info on this page. So that's annoying. But we'll go ahead and start it up. All right, let's see here. We've already got our departure set. We've got our altitude set. Got our brakes on max. I just want to check and make sure the uh, switch works. Okay, good. That does work for arming the uh, the spoilers. I haven't actually used that in the cockpit yet. Uh, we are on standby auto uh, and. ATC. It's uh, also important to actually give your uh, levers all a jiggle before you start flying, just to make sure they're working. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Let's get our IFR clearance. San Antonio ground orbit two six three IFR to Indianapolis, ready to copy. Orbit two six three is cleared to Indianapolis. The airport has filed. Take off runway one three left. Climb and maintain thirteen thousand feet. Departure frequency is one two eight decimal zero five squawk five zero zero four. Five zero zero four. In the box five. Oh, we're zero. Zero zero four. Okay, read back. Orbit 263, cleared to Indianapolis Airport as filed. Set that to auto. Take off runway, one tree left Altitude climb, reporting. and maintain 13,000 feet. Departure on 128 decimal 05 squawk 5004. Orbit 263 read back is correct. Contact ground on 121 decimal niner when ready to taxi. There's 13,000. Oh, also, one other thing I did change for the... Uh, a lot of the autopilot buttons I have set to different things, uh, which uh, I should have mentioned in the uh, in the other part of the video. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, so I've got the um, the HDG button. I've got that set to the heading autopilot heading slot index. Uh, that switches between managed and um, selected heading mode. Uh, for the nav button, I have that set to localizer hold. So that's as close as you can get to holding a VOR in this Airbus. For the uh, approach button, you can just have that set to approach. That works uh, perfectly normal. For the reverse course button, I don't think I have that mapped to anything. For the alt button, ALT, I have that mapped to um, flight level change uh, because that is the same function as hitting engage selected altitude on that, that knob. Uh, and then V speed, I have that for so, uh, engage V speed. Uh, then IAS is the um, uh, autopilot speed slot index. Uh, so that switches between uh, managed speed and selected speed. Uh, so a little bit different from your typical autopilot button setup, but yeah, important to note. All right, let's get ourselves uh, disconnected from the jetway. San Antonio ground orbit 263. Could you please disconnect the jetway from the aircraft? Let's prepare for the pushback. So, we want our nav and logo lights on. We'll turn our wing lights on as well, since we're going to be on the ground. Uh, let's get our smoking light on and our seatbelt light on. That will do nicely. I would like... Ah, there we go. Just like that one notch of lights is perfect in here. It's very nice and atmospheric. Okay. And we are flying with the T-16,000 
uh, joystick once again, since this is an Airbus. And I also fried my yolk. Uh, <laughs> it's not, not relevant. Uh, don't worry about it. Let's get ourselves a pushback. Shift P. Let's release the parking brake. Boop. set this to the start position and once they start moving us get our beacon on let's go ahead and start engine one okay, you can see that's pulling up here I would like you to steer me to the right please San Antonio ground orbit 263 requesting pushback tuck to steer the aircraft to the right. Yay. Orbit 263, your request has been transmitted to the operator. Okay, and then we will hit the parking brake. Shift P to stop the pushback. Make that go away. Nope, nope. Back inside. Thank you. Let's check on the engine. How's that looking? I didn't turn on the fuel pumps. Boom, 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 and boom. How about now? Hey, look, we got fuel. <laughs> I knew I forgot something. have a uh, actually have engine stuff excellent all right so Eric no idea what any of that means let's go to the next page boop the next page doesn't do anything uh, perf no in it sorry uh, route alternate none flight number two yeah, yeah, yeah. look fine to me uh, perf uh, we're gonna want to do. Sorry, I uh, need to look at the flaps lever. We want flaps one for our takeoff. So that will be boom, boom, boom. There's our B speeds. Excellent. Our transition altitude is uh, one eight zero zero zero. Flex takeoff temp. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Um, one, three left. Yep, those look pretty good. So slat retracts, so 174, we can retract our flaps. Uh, we can go back to flap zero uh, safely. So, uh, I think that's pretty much all we need to set up on this in the uh, default Airbus. All right, engine one looks good. Let's go ahead and start engine two. Boom. Let's go ahead and get our taxi clearance. Request taxi IFR. San Antonio ground orbit 263 with echo ready to taxi IFR. Orbit 263 taxi to an halt short of runway 13 left by a taxiway Gulf Delta cross runway 13 right. Contact tower on 119 or decimal 8 when ready. Taxiing hold short runway one tree left using taxiway golf delta cross runway one tree right orbit two six tree. One one nine. Eight. Okay, got that ready. Let's get our taxi light on. Boom. Got it. Excellent. Okay, let's see if I know roughly where we are. We're just gonna taxi with the uh, left engine for now. Since the that was a little odd.
My steering was backwards for a moment there. That was fascinating. <laughs> Seems fine now. Can I dim my flight instruments a little bit? No. Yes, there we go. Oh, too much. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. All right. I think I can use both engines now. Pop outside, make sure we're taking the correct, correct taxiways. Okay, so looks like this is going to be the one we want to use to get over there. All right, cool. Taxiing. Let's go ahead and activate flight in FS economy. Okay, flight is started, and we can just whoop, make the taxi go a little bit quicker. Careful, the plane's a little bit sensitive when you're traveling at 4x uh, normal time. And then slow down time. Boop, boop. Back to normal. Nope. The engines again, please. Lights and beacon lights, we already got cleared across the runway. Nobody is landing or taking off that I can see. Lights off, we are clear of the runway. Okay, and gentle brakes, gentle brakes, gentle brakes. And stop. Oop, did I just accidentally cross that line? Nope. Cool. Perfect. All right. Into the plane. Let's be prepared for our takeoff. So I'm going to want the flight director on. Perfect. Mm -hmm. We are already in the correct climb and heading modes on there. We've already got that set. Let's go ahead and arm. Spoilers. Uh, arm the spoilers. Anti ice can be off for now. We've got the altitude set. Uh, we've got all of our lights in the correct positions. We've got the APU still on. Let's go ahead and turn on engine 2 bleed and generator 2. We can turn off the APU generator and the APU bleed. And we'll go ahead and. I heard somewhere that they keep the APU on during takeoff, but I don't know if that's correct. So we'll just go ahead and turn it off. Because I'm pretty sure I don't need it. We'll turn it back on if we hit birds. Uh, <laughs> got the lights, those lights on already. Okay, I'm satisfied. Let's do our takeoff. Let's tune the tower here. And then our departure was 12805. 12... Eight oh 
five. Excellent. Okay, so we're ready for that. Let's get our takeoff clearance. San Antonio Tower Orbit 263 ready for IFR departure runway 1 tree left. Orbit 263 cleared for takeoff runway 1 tree left. Lights on. We're going to use this lean forward view for the takeoff. My bad, my bad. Cleared for takeoff runway. One tree left orbit. 263. Okay, so we're actually going to hit the parking brake. And I'm going to have to look at the throttle levers just to make sure I get the position right for the flex takeoff. There we go. Engines pull up. Parking brake. Released. Keep us centered. Keep us centered. V one. Rotate. Well, almost ran out of runway here. Woo. Woof. <laughs> Not quite enough runway there. All right, retract the flaps, or er, retract the gear. Retract the flaps. Woof. Orbit 263, contact San Antonio. Almost not good. Four, one, two, eight, Going to 128.05 orbit, 263. Bringing our throttles back to climb. Disarming the spoilers. Let's tune San Antonio departure. Contact San Antonio departure. San Antonio departure orbit 263 is at 3,000 feet, climbing 13,000 feet. Orbit 263 San Antonio departure continue as planned. Altimeter 29er decimal 98. Excellent, no change to the altimeter. I'm flying this by hand using the, uh, the flight director primarily. So yeah, if you look down here, you'll see our throttles are in the climb detent, right where they belong. Just noticing my flight path is a little bit off. Yep, so they're right where they belong. They're also in the proper spot on my actual physical throttle quad. Uh, I highly recommend at least adjusting that sensitivity curve a little bit, uh, because if you don't, your <laughs> reverse uh, your reverse levers are actually going to be very much in the way of um, very much in the way of the switches you want to be hitting on your um, on your cockpit. So let's bank the plane to the right. Orbit 263 climb and maintain flight level 180. 180, excellent. Climb and maintain flight level 180 orbit 263. Let's go ahead and engage the autopilot. Boom. Auto throttle working nicely here. We'll be above 10,000 in just a moment. Oh, and there's another airplane off to our left. Excellent. 40 minutes in, we're finally off the ground and flying along. <laughs> <laughs> Orbit 263 contact Houston Center on 120.6. 120 
One two zero six. Excellent. I actually did the the whole takeoff with. One two zero with... decimal six for orbit two six three. Without co-pilot help, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Definitely used the uh, the shortcut to change frequencies though. Houston center orbit two six three is at nine thousand four hundred feet. Climbing flight level one eight zero. Orbit two six three Houston center. Continue to jumbo as planned. Altimeter three zero decimal two eight. Ooh. That's a, quite the altimeter change. And then I need to set the nose light off. And I think we're in smooth enough air we can turn seatbelt light off. All right, so with the seatbelt light going off, I'm going to hit fast forward. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take me to actually get to Indianapolis and land this thing, so I probably will see you uh, when we get there. Okay, we're going to turn down the time acceleration because the game is real not happy about that. Orbit two six three contact Houston Center on one three four decimal two. Going to one three four decimal two orbit two six three. Houston Center orbit two six three flight level one eight zero. Orbit two six three Houston Center continue to jumbo as planned. Orbit 263 contact Houston Center on 132 decimal 35. 132 decimal 35 orbit 263. Houston Center orbit 263, 17,900 feet. Orbit 263 Houston Center continue to jumbo as planned. What if I don't want to go to jumbo? Orbit 263, climb and maintain flight level 250. 250. Orbit 263, did you copy? I did. Just give me a moment. <laughs> climb and maintain flight level 250, orbit 263. I don't think the timer actually works in this. No. Cool. Okay, cool. I didn't forget to start the timer. The timer doesn't function. Generic 9 or 1 for you are 6, 7 miles northwest. Descend and maintain 4,000 feet. Keep speed below 210 knots. Expect ILS runway 18 right approach via hub transition. Clear to HOUKM. Descend and maintain 4,000 feet. Keep speed below 210 knots. Expect ILS runway 18 right approach by a hub transition. Clear to HOUKM generic 9 or 1 4. apartment just shook. Probably nothing. <laughs> I do live in California, though. Could be an earthquake. Probably Orbit not. Orbit 263 climb and maintain flight level 350. 350. Climb and maintain flight level 350. Orbit 263. Hit the altitude button. There we go. Sometimes it doesn't work quite right, and you actually have to go in and hit the engage selected altitude thing, and then you'll see open climb appear here, and that's how you know it's working. Orbit 263 
contact FT or center on 135 decimal 375. Going to 135 decimal 375 orbit 263. FT Worth Center Orbit 263 is climbing through flight level 275 for flight level 350. Orbit 263 FT Worth Center, continue to wire as planned. Struggling to climb here a little bit. Yeah, it's fine, we'll let the plane do its fuel efficient thing. Yeah, we're in the climb phase. Just immediately handed me off to another. Orbit two yep. six three contact FT work center <laughs> on one three four decimal one five. I love flying through the corners of airspaces. One three four decimal one five. It's so much fun, you know. FT work center orbit two six three is climbing through flight level three three zero for flight level three five zero. Orbit two six three FT work center continue to wire this plan. Would y'all make up your minds? One tree, two decimal eight five orbit two six tree. So yeah, I find a lot of times when you get into the uh, into the flight Center levels, it helps to do the V speed. Rather than uh. Orbit two six tree FT or center continue to wire this plan. Rather than the open climb. Orbit two six tree climb and maintain flight level tree nine or zero. Climb and maintain flight level tree nine or zero orbit two six tree. And then the uh, the V speed button will just immediately bring the V speed back up, which is nifty. Uh, though changing the V speed on the Bravo doesn't you don't see it change on the thing if you haven't selected V speed already, which can be a little annoying, but not too big a deal. Let's fast forward again. A little bumpy here. All right, let's slow down the fast forwarding because it's struggling a little. It's a kind of physics time warp, so it can get a little confused if you let it. What altitude are we climbing to? Three nine or zero. We are really struggling to get up here.
contact FT or center on 132.025. One three two decimal zero two five for orbit two six three. FT Worth Center Orbit two six three flight level three nine or zero. Orbit two six three FT Worth Center continue to wire as planned. Okay, we're flying straight and Orbit level. Orbit 263, contact FT Worth Center on 132.85. I think we can fast forward one a little more. 132.85 for Orbit 263. FT Worth Center, Orbit 263, flight level 390. Orbit 263, FT Worth Center, continue to wire this plant. Yeah, let's try and accelerate a little more. Boom. Nope. Nope. Wild oscillations. <laughs> all right. All right. So three levels of fast forward is the most we can do. So that's, you can see how the time is passing on this display down here. Um, I really would love to do an approach and landing in the same video. Mm. Then I have to edit. I don't want to edit. I don't want to edit, Mom. Yeah, as you can see, we're, you know, about definitely not even close to halfway. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there. Cool, the cops just pulled someone over right outside my window. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here because it's about to get noisy, I suspect. Thank you all so much for watching. <laughs> uh, my name is Elio Dare. You can find me on the internet at Elio Dare on uh, Xbox Live, Steam, Nintendo Switch, and of course Twitter. Twitter's the best place to get a hold of me. Or you can leave comments below the videos. I do appreciate all those because I'm still a tiny channel and that sort of thing helps my channel get bigger. Slowly but surely. Eventually. Why did our engines just throttle down? Oh, we reached Mach Mach point seven eight. Excellent. We're going fast. Yay, fast! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. We'll do the landing in another video. It's going to be a while. I have to travel for work, so uh, I hope this one was enjoyable since it was nice and long. <laughs> I might just do the landing as a separate video, throw it up at the same time. We'll see. Have a great day. Bye. Windows G. Orbit two six three contact Memphis.